What's going on everyone? My name is Josh19 and today I wanted to go over how to add a graphic for the alert window in T-Notifier using custom CSS. So basically that's going to kind of look like this. Uh, you guys should be able to see it on your screen. Uh, basically you can see that I do have a custom graphic that I made here. So let me kind of go into Photoshop first for you guys. Uh, and kind of go over the graphic. Obviously I'm not going to go over how to make the graphic. Um, basically what I did is I went went ahead and took a wild star graphic uh, from the website because I'm kind of um, going to start streaming wild star in the future so I wanted to make this notification wild star related. So I took a graphic, I edited it how I want and I made a little bar like this. Um, of course what you need to know within Photoshop is obviously your image size. So in case you don't know how to do that, is you can go to uh, image and you can go ahead and go to image size. What this is going to tell you is the width and the height and this is uh, important information that we'll need to remember. Uh, again, if you're using a, a different program or something like that, you can also find the width and height or if you just happen to know them, uh, that's fine. When you're actually uh, saving out your file, uh, again you want to make sure that you have a uh, a clear background and not a white background. As you can see, if I put a white background behind it, um, if I save that image, it's going to be white and it's going to have a white box. So if I unhide this, it's obviously checkerboard, meaning that it's it's see-through. Um, so what you would want to do is is leave it like that, so that that way it appeared when I actually use the notification here. Let me do it one more time. Uh, you can actually see on the screen on the corners up here that it's actually see-through. Um, so that's kind of the effect that we want to go for. So what you want to do here is when you actually save it out, again, whatever program you're using, just make sure you save it as a, let me bring this over, uh, as a PNG. So what that's going to do is the PNG is a, is a great type of image that allows you to save the alpha channels. And what the alpha channel is, is allowing you basically to save this, this area to make it invisible. So I would recommend saving it as a PNG and then you're going to get a graphic image. Once you get the graphic image, we'll go ahead, I'll show you, you can go ahead and uh, let me open up these internet browsers for you. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring over OBS for you guys. Uh, again, sorry for the OBS inception here, but um, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you guys how to add it in here and everything again through OBS. Um, so first thing, obviously, once you have your image, you're going to go to Imgur or some other um, image uploading website. This is just the home page of Imgur and you're going to go ahead and upload. You can just click computer and then click find your uh, image. Uh, again, mine was just this. I go ahead and hit open and it uploads it. Once you upload it, you're going to get to a page similar to this uh, and you're going to see your image here, which all you have to do is basically click on it and it's going to take you to a page like this, which is actually going to show your image. Again, uh, it may look like there is white here which I was telling you before, which we actually had saved, and it should be see-through, but it actually is see-through because it's a PNG image. So you don't have to worry about when you're seeing it white here. It's actually because the background of the actual web page is white, um, so it's it's actually see-through here. Um, so once we have this PNG image, uh, or this actual link here, this is the link that we're going to be using when we add the custom CSS. So let's go ahead and jump into T-Notifier. Um, so the first thing we want to do is go over to the Getting Started page. I kind of just want to familiarize you guys with this. Uh, so if you scroll down, once you're on the get, Getting Started page, if you scroll down to the Custom CSS Classes section, uh, this is where it actually gives you some of the classes for CSS. Uh, I don't expect you guys to know anything about CSS, and you don't have to in this tutorial. I'll kind of just go over everything for you guys. But for some of you guys that are, are familiar with CSS, then of course you know that these are all the different classes that you can use. And of course what we're going to do when we're writing our code is we're going to go ahead and use this TM widget class and we're going to go ahead and use the uh, notification box as a subclass for that main class to write our CSS code. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go into our widgets here and we're going to go ahead and hit edit. And in here of course we can uh, change everything. So down here at the very bottom is your custom CSS area and this is where we're going to add our image. A couple things that you do want to keep in mind here is um, when, when I had told you about the image size of our image, so if we go back into Photoshop and we go to image size again, uh, we can see that the height of our image is 70. So we need to make sure that in here the actual widget height is 70 also. So that way uh, when the widget actually comes down, it's the same size as our actual image. Otherwise the image will get smaller or distorted depending on if it's 
uh, less or more than your actual height of your image. And again, uh, within the CSS, we're actually going to define the, the height and width, as you can see down here in the code. Um, so, so that's just something to keep in mind is make sure you, you change your widget height to that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this uh, custom CSS code. Again, you guys can just copy it directly if you want, uh, but I'm going to go go ahead and kind of explain it. So basically, you have your team widget, which again was that that class, the main uh, class or the whole container for the widget uh, is basically the description and telling you what it does. And then we're going to use the dot uh, notification dash box which is another class, which is the notification box itself as a subclass for it. So we're, we're basically uh, creating a subclass here and we're defining that the background URL is going to be this Imgur image, which is the one that we actually grabbed here, which is this hyperlink. So obviously uh, in this case, you're gonna copy whatever, whatever uh, link it is you have here for your, your image and you're gonna go ahead and paste that within these parentheses here. Um, so again, if you're using a different site from Imgur or something like that, just make sure you paste it in there. Uh, you always also wanna use no repeat. No repeat, basically what that means is it's only gonna show it one time. Uh, you obviously don't want it repeating over and over and over and over, uh, things like that. So here we're gonna define the height and the width. Um, so again, this goes back to the Photoshop um, or whatever program you're using, uh, the height is 70 and we have the width of 1059. Uh, this is really random. I don't know why I chose this, but <laughs> yeah, um, you can make it whatever you want. Uh, so so here we're, we're actually defining the height and width of the actual um, image. And then the padding is actually what we're going to be using to move the text if we need to. In this case, we're not uh, going to move the text at all because the way that I created the image uh, back in Photoshop, I created the image so where the text, when the text appears, it's going to be right in the, the middle of it, and that's perfect for my image. If you have a, a long image or something, you want the text to be at the top of it or, or something like that, you may need to move the text around. Um, so what, in order to move the text around, you can use padding, and I'll kind of show you guys an example of that in just a minute. Um, so this is the basic widget here that once I've gone ahead and, well, let's go ahead and once you uh, enter this code here in the custom CSS, you're going to hit the edit widget at the bottom, which is a little cut off, uh, and that's going to go ahead and save it. Then you're going to go ahead and launch a widget, and you'll get to a page like this. So I'll go ahead and just refresh it. And um, again, you'll see the green bar, which was keyed out. If you guys are unfamiliar how to do this, I do have some other tutorial videos on how to do that. Um, and I'll, I guess I can go through it again through OBS in just a second for you guys. Um, so when we hit hit our send test notification here, you'll see that, um, of course, our uh, image actually pops down, which is pretty cool, and then where our text is exactly in the middle of it. So a couple of things we can do here is if we want to move the text, uh, this is what I was talking about with the padding. Now the padding is a little confusing, I know, because it doesn't really specify, but basically uh, the way that it works is the first... first uh, pixel area here this moves it down uh, the next one actually moves it left the next one right here moves it to or up and the last one here moves it to the right so for example if we put in 20 pixels here and we go ahead and hit edit widget and it saves it we refresh this and we hit send notification you can see that the test notification text was actually moved lower. Uh, the reason that the padding works for this is because we had, since we had defined the widget size and everything and the height, the image actually stays in the same position, but the text is actually moving. Um, so this is just a simple way to actually move the text around. Again, um, if we want to move it far to the, to the left, let's say we want to move it 300 pixels to the left, we'll go ahead and hit edit widget, save that, refresh it, and then hit test notification and you can see that it's not moved down and to the left it's not centered. Um, in most cases like I was saying before you'll probably just leave these at zero and if you don't even want to mess with it at all you don't even have to have this padding line in there if you're not going to make any changes. I just put it in here for this case so you guys do know that if you want to move that text around you can add this line in right here and it will uh, allow you to do that. Alrighty so let me kind of go over how to actually set this up 
within uh, OBS itself. Again, it's very simple to the way we we did it before. Is you're going to right click, you're going to add, and you're going to go ahead and, and choose Window Capture. We're going to hit OK. We're going to go ahead and select our T notifier. Again, this is a little confusing for you guys because I have two open. Um, I can go ahead and close the other ones for so it's less confusing for you guys. Uh, but again, in right click, add window capture. OK. Uh, when you go to your drop down box, you're going to see the actual T notifier. And, and there will only be one. There won't be two, like I said, uh, as I just showed you an example a second ago because I had two T notifiers open. So you'll hit OK. And then we'll go ahead and select our subregion. We'll move this box to the side just a little and um, check subregion and select subregion. So here we're going to have to be really careful on how we actually uh, size this up. So we're going to have to put the double line just inside or right at the very borderline of the green box here. And then as for our image we need to make sure that we cut the box just to the side of the image so we can kind of use these upper icons as like a little uh, way to kind of see okay so about at the edge of here and about at about here is our box so we're gonna select our subregion go to about here and again it doesn't have to be perfect but you want to kind of try to size it a little bit in so we've got it about right here we're gonna go ahead and uh, hit OK and we're going to go ahead and right click on it and go to position and size and fit the screen. Again, you don't have to do fit the screen if you don't want to. You can size this however you want. Uh, if you click on your window capture again and hit edit scene, you can size it however you want and, and of course position, position it. In this case, we're going to position it at the very top because we want it to go down. As well as if you guys have an image that you want to appear from the bottom, as I mentioned before in one of my other videos, if you change the direction from uh, bottom or top, uh, you can have it come down from the top or come down from the or come up from the bottom, whichever way is easier for you. Uh, as well as the uh, the text, the text color and things like that, you can still change all that. You could also do it through the custom CSS, but you can just use the uh, the text boxes and things that they have it within here if you want to change the text uh, font size or the text color again if you're very good with custom CSS you can just do all that stuff within this box okay so back to it so we're in here where we've edited our scene here we've moved it to where we want we're gonna go ahead and hit edit scene again that box will go away and um, now we're ready to key it out so we're gonna right click on it and hit properties this box will pop up again which is the same one we had before and we're gonna go ahead and check color key and select it and now it's keyed out now we are gonna have a little bit of a problem here when we send test notification you now see when it's on your guys screen is there's a little area that's that's kind of being uh, it's bleeding through the greens bleeding through and the reason is because the image that I have actually has some shadow underneath it um, so of course, first of all, this could be prevented if I cleaned up the shadow or removed the shadow from it. But there's also some tricks if you want to have kind of a shadow feature like this that you can still kind of use it. It's not perfect, but what we'll do here is go ahead and, again, right-click on our window capture and select properties. And then you have these two things here called similarity and blend. Um, I just messed around with these until I got something that I liked. Uh, so I got a similarity of about 47 and a blend of about 37 and those were settings that that were okay with me again they're not perfect and it, you won't really be able to make it perfect if you have shadows and things like that uh, because the keen system with through uh, OBS is pretty basic but um, it's it's still okay so now when we go ahead and send the test notification you can see that this area is, is definitely cleaned up a lot and you re you barely ever see any of the green you can see a little bit of dark green um, but again that's not that noticeable and it still looks okay so that's pretty much it I just kinda wanted to go over how to add a custom graphic I know that a lot of you guys would probably be interested in this and uh, there's not a whole lot of information on how to actually do this so I thought this would be pretty helpful for you guys um, so that way you can customize it and, and make it a little more uh, unique to your stream. Alrighty guys, well thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos in the future, then please subscribe and don't forget to keep on owning.